few men have had such an impact on an industry across the world. Waikir Hamid, chairman of Sipla, has not just been a pioneer in creating India's pharmaceutical industry. He has been an innovator who pretty much rewrote the rules of the game. There was a lot to cover when we caught up with him, but I began by asking him what he felt of the many battles he had fought and the image as the Robin Hood of pharmaceuticals that he had created for himself. The healthcare industry is different from other industries because this is directly connected with saving lives. And I think that's where the figure, say you said Robin Hood comes in, we are saving lives. And to make, to do that, one requires in the context of India and the third world and the developing world, we require access to medicines at affordable prices. That thought created an entire industry in India, and we'll come to that. But when you came back from Cambridge, what was it like? Because big pharma, the MNC farmers dominated the entire landscape. They dominated the entire landscape, even post-independence, right up to 1972. September 72, the patent laws of India changed. We Indians, we were very, very small at the time, started fighting the government that look we are following today the British patent law of 1911 and this fight took 10 to 12 years of fighting we were not fighting on patents what we were fighting for that a country like India even at that time could not afford a monopoly in health care and that was a big fight and it took 12 years and ultimately, in September 1972, Indira Gandhi passed the bill, the Patent Act, no product patents, only process patents for seven years. And that gave us the legal freedom, the legal freedom to manufacture any drug internationally known. We could manufacture in India and sell it in India and elsewhere, wherever the laws were similar to India. Uh, at affordable prices. Dr. Y.K. Hamid was among those who pushed India to adopt the process patent regime that allowed Indian pharmaceutical companies to copy through a different process, big drugs, and so bring down costs. That started in 1972. But it's a testimony to the prowess of companies like Sipla that the ramp up was fast. In 1960, when I came back, I felt that the foundation and the backbone of the pharma industry is not the tablets or the capsules or the injections. It is who manufactures the active ingredients that go into those products. So in our own small way, Sipla had started the manufacture of what is called now APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients. And when this law changed in 72, we were already in that area of manufacture. So that is what gave a boost. And we did that. We reverse engineered many products. In our company alone, for the first time in India, we must have marketed at least 20 to 40 so-called new chemical entities for India. And by 1984, we were ready to license, to, to get FDA, US FDA approval compulsion for the industry to go out overseas at that point because what's interesting is that you could have been pretty satisfied servicing a very growing market what compelled the industry we, to start looking at as suppliers of generics go overseas we were not looking so much for that because we were looking at that time only to supply the active raw material we were not looking to ex to export finished dosage forms because till a few years ago the stigma was there, oh, Indian products are not very good. But today, India is regarded as a pharmacy capital of the world. And uh, So what, what led to that change? That I think what change led in to mindset? the change, that it gave us, after 1972, the freedom mm. to manufacture whatever we wanted. So the technology base of India, of the pharma industry, expanded. And not only CIPLA. But many companies took up the challenge of producing raw materials. From APIs, Indian companies moved to generics. 
but the turning point for Sipla and in fact the entire Indian pharma industry came later. Between 2001 and 2004, at the height of the AIDS epidemic, Sipla put out the lowest cost cocktail of anti-AIDS drugs that made this company a game changer in world healthcare. Hamid says his company stumbled upon this opportunity. In 1991, a very close friend of mine from Hyderabad, government laboratory, comes to me, Dr. Rama Rao, and says, look, I have developed a process to make a drug called AZT. I did not know what AZT was at the time. It was the first and only drug in 1991 to be used against HIV. We went to the government together and, we, and CIPLA took up the challenge to produce AZT. We did it in 93, marketed the product, no sale. We sold it in India for $2 a day against the international price of $12 a day. And there were no takers. Why was that? Too expensive. Even $2 a day in those days was okay, expensive. Good. So we shut down the whole project on HIV. And you threw, threw away 200,000 pills. I That's heard. right. <laughs> and then? That's right. Then in 1996, I read a paper which said that a combination of three drugs could help alleviate the suffering of HIV and AIDS. And I took up the challenge again. And by the year 2000, we were ready with our cocktail. Mm, that's in four years. That's, that's quite commendable. Years. Yeah, we made the because we had the ability to produce the active substance. The scaling up was easy. Scaling up of the raw materials, so we did that, and then came uh, the big uh, confrontation with the international uh, community at the European Union. In fact, virtually to the day, it was on the seventh of February, two thousand and one virtually 13 years ago, when we announced that we would give the cocktail at a, under a dollar a day. And that phrase uh, changed the whole concept of treatment for HIV. And what even today gives me immense satisfaction that at that time, 13 years ago, hardly 2,000 to 4,000 people in Africa could afford treatment. 8,000 Africans were dying per day. And today, over 9 million Africans are being treated for HIV AIDS. By offering the lowest cost drug for the dreaded HIV virus, Cipla didn't just become famous, it transformed the way the world saw Indian pharmaceuticals. But how did Cipla manage to shake up the industry? More on that when we return.